this water, I've got electric bilge and a manual bilge. Yeah. Uh, that's yours. Um, PLB, if you ever need it, just flip that up. That pops the area out there. Yeah. Comes up. There's an on button on the side. Click it on once, click on twice. You've got R and I coming out to you. So nice and easy. Um, we won't be needing it, but it's always worth mentioning it. Uh, a jacket. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Well, hello, welcome back to another muscle fishing film. We are on the polycraft today. Um, there wasn't a fancy intro at the beginning uh, because we wanted to just get out and um, get to the wreck that we're fishing. We're a little way off today, um, and the idea is we're gonna basically start with the furthest out wreck, which is the one we're on now, and then we're gonna very slowly make our way in shore. Uh, I'm just going down with a slow pitch jig for now, um, and then I'm gonna set up my usual uh, sidewinder setup with a shad and boom a little bit later on but yeah we're out here today i've got a friend with me um we had a little bit of a slow ride out here because we had a little bit of a flowing sea and it was a little bit a little bit snotty but um it's basically now got a little bit deeper and then the, so the waves get a lot bigger and they're a lot easier to manage so we're basically going to be on slack water for a bit here um so we might have to wait sort of an hour two hours before the tide kicks in but we've got a little bit of bait, we've got some little scratching rigs, so we might mess around for that, that sort of slow time, and then we'll wait till the fish kick on when the tide comes good. At the moment, yeah, just gonna slow the jig, we'll see how we go. Right, so we've not really got much tide, so what I've done is I've just put us right over the wreck for now. Um, so I can work out that drift line a little bit more. So I'm just going down with me, uh, oh, little spider on me there, don't know how that's got there. Yeah, just going down with a shad and boom drop that to the bottom and then slowly retrieve it. It's a very small tide, so it might not be very easy, the wrecking today, but we'll find out. Ooh, that was a little bit of wreck there, guys. Right, so we've set us up for our second drift now. Um, I've gone with a slightly heavier weight just to get down there a little bit quicker. And uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. Transducers in, but we should, should get a nice drift on this one. So we're at the bottom, we're just gonna gauge our strike mode, and then we're just gonna wind up slowly consistently winding at the same speed. Even if you get a peck, just keep winding at the same speed. Otherwise what happens is they um, they know something's off. Oh, there's a little tap there. As you can see, I'm just keep on winding the same speed. Our wreck's gonna come in probably in the next minute, I would say. So we've gone down with a rhubarb and custard. Um, today's a very small tide, as I mentioned earlier. So wrecking is generally better done on a spring tide, but at the moment in shore, there's just not a lot of fish around, which is worth catching. Um, so, hence why we're still going to try it. We've got a couple of slow pitch jigs, we've got some squid jigs as well. A little bit of bait as well if we get really desperate and just want to catch a couple of fish, we'll put on some scratching rigs and just see what we can get. But hopefully, hopefully if we can bag a couple of pollock early on, give us a bit of confidence and uh, we'll just stay out here pretty much all day, I think, uh, on this wreck, because sometimes wrecks can just switch off. Um, right, so we're coming up to our wreck now. Right, our wreck's coming in now. So we've got a little bit of wreck on the bottom there. So I'll drop back down onto that wreck. Sometimes you lose it, sometimes you don't, but let's give it a go. Oh yeah, so no, it's a better fish. There you go, guys, we've got a better fish here. Much, much better fish, guys. Here we go. Oh yes, this is a nice one, Chris. This is a nice one. This is a really nice one, guys. This is a big pollock. This has just come alive. It didn't realize it was hooked for a while. We've got a four inch, Rhubarb and custard scary zeal. Just letting the rod do the work. This could be a very, very nice fish. Oh, the heartbeat is going. I'm very excited to see this. This could be what we come here for. It will be what we come here for. It's just how big it's going to be. But it's coming up now. Still fighting me, guys. Still fighting me. We're at the boom. Yeah, pollock. Come here, grab it. You got it. Three. There we go. Nice. Not huge, but it's there and it's target species. There we go, guys. First pollock of the day. That's a nice table sized fish, really. It's about three pounds. Um, caught with a four inch rhubarb and custard sidewinder lure. 
Excellent. Look, I have a feeling this fish may have took my took my lure and it's popped out. So you can see there, there is a hole, a hook hole in its lip, in its top lip. So I reckon that's taken it, it's come off and it's gone again. <laughs> Excellent, really happy with that. That's target species, we know they're on here. Um, yeah, just give us a little bit of confidence that we can stay here all day and hopefully bag a few. So, excellent, happy days. We've got no real radar signal. Nothing, but G, um, GRP hasn't either. No, okay. it's got nothing. Um, I've had a radar deflector on this three times, and, but, and all times it's blown off or it's got caught or, yeah. it's just, oh. and actually those little thin radar deflectors are rubbish. Yeah. I don't they, think they present. They don't do anything. Uh, unless you're in that perfect line of yeah. sight to that one square yeah. side. Um, the, the ones which are quite good are the, the boxes, uh, the big barrel type ones, but this is too small of a boat to have one of them. Um, and then you can have like an amplifier, which amplifies the signal, but again, it's, you, it's not realistic on this sort of size boat. You've just got to be a bit more careful. So just had to redo the drift line. Uh, we've got a totally different drift now. The ebb started, I think, a little bit earlier, which is great, so we've actually got a bit of tide. Um, not loads of tide, it's been about half a knot, but that's okay. What we have got in the distance, and I'll try and zoom in now, is a beam trawler. Now that's probably scalloping. Um, we'll have to pay a little bit of close attention to him because what the scallopers do, they come quite close to wrecks and um, they try and scoop up the scallops near it. So we'll have to keep an eye on him because he is coming towards us. And I'm not in the mood to argue with a big trawler today. Oh, he's, gonna, he's, on the, he's on the very, the, the track line he's doing is, is pretty much solid. But. So you can see that um, trawler there, uh, he's got his beams out. so. I think he's probably fishing, although I can't see any beams off the back. Um, yeah, he is. He's towing gear. So he's probably looking for, I'd imagine, scallops. I think he's scalloping. Uh, yeah, I can see his scallops on the uh, on the side. They're like big, like, um, like grits, like claws like that, and they go along and they scoop up all the scallops. So he's going to pass quite close, but we've kept an eye on him the whole time. I'm going to sit down in a minute because there's going to be a little bit of residual swell. And once he's passed, we'll, um, we'll drop the rods. Safety's got to become come first over uh, over fishing. So even though he's probably 200 foot away, as you can see him, yeah, he's a scalloper. So yeah, he's scalloping. Um, and he's coming quite close to this wreck because he knows there's scallops here. So once he goes past, I'll reset our drift and um, and we'll go again. But yeah, you're never that far from a boat out here. Got a really nice drift now, guys. We're right over the wreck. Um, I'm just going to wind up now because we're right over the top of it. Yeah, that, that swell from that trawler was quite considerable. But nothing this boat can't handle. So we're over the wreck now. We're doing still about half a knot. So it's still, it's still okay. It's not ideal, but it's okay. Oh, fish on, fish on, fish on guys, fish on. Yep, fish on. Not too bad, I don't think. Fish on, I think. Fish on. Chris is on as well, I think. You in? Yeah. I hope so. So I think Chris is on behind us, so we just hit a shoal there. I hit this drift more down the middle. I'm keeping the tension on the rod. Got the sun in my eyes, so I can barely see anything. Got to be coming towards the surface now. Turning into a glorious day now. Right, here we go. It could even be a small pouting. Yeah, he's a pouting. <laughs> uh, I think we might have a match pair. <laughs> so, Chris, I think, has got a pouting on. And uh, I've also got Mr. Pouting. Quite a big one, to be fair. He did actually put up a little bit of a fight, but <laughs> could be good for a conger bait, but I'll um, I'll put him back because we're not actually going to do any congering today. So, see if he goes back. If He, he might have bloated. But regardless, it'll be seal or uh, seagull food. No, he swam back. What are you thinking, Chris? Pouting? You got his granddad? <laughs> no, he's got his infant son. <laughs> Absolute granddad pouting over there. On the slow pitch jig. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Just so this wreck sits about 10 meters off the bottom, so it's quite a quite a big wreck. Got a 30 foot tall. 
I see some fish sitting above it as well, actually. Oh, oh there you go. Chris is into a fish behind us, guys. Is it a 12 to 20 and it's hardly got a dip Hardly in moving, it. yeah. <laughs> World's smallest pouting. Oh, fish on. Oh. Fish on. Yep, yeah, better fish, guys. Better, better fish. Yep. Oh, my goodness, yes. Oh, he's taking a bit of light. He's taking a bit of light. Bloody hell. Come off, he's come off. Ah. Oh. That was a better fish, guys. That was a better fish. Took me off, I think it went into the wreck. Nope, Lua's still there, so let's go straight back down. He's still there. Yeah, that was that was a double, guys. So, oh, no no stopping it. <laughs> Line going straight, and that was a tight gear as well. I think Chris pouted. Or oh, a little pollock. Starting to wake up a bit. That's what we like to hear. But that might just be out of sympathy <laughs> for the camera. That's it, he says, I'm gonna... Oh, oh no, there. pollock. Pollock, nice one, mate. That's not a bad fish at all. Are you alright? You, you'll get me like Ready? Lovely fish, mate. Well done. Excellent. <laughs> that was so just hooked on that lip. So that's Chris's pollock down there. Another sort of three and a bit pounder. I'll get him to hold it up in a second. And that was caught on a slow pitch jig, so a different method. There's some fish there, guys. Um, let's. Um, I'm still over that wreck. I'm going to get my lure down quickly and uh, see if we can get off. There we go. That's uh, that's Chris's pollock. Similar sort of size to mine. Probably a little bit bigger, actually. Um, when they're small, you get these little black spots on them and they sort of die off. Uh, the black spots disappear as they get bigger. But that's a good size table fish. And uh, yeah, happy days. Oh, so I just lost that. That was a lovely fish, guys, I lost. Um, nothing I can do is on, on very tight gear. It just into the wreck. Off it, off it went. So just going back down again, he's still down there. Chris had a nice pollock as well, so they're feeding on slack water, guys. They'll, uh, when this tide does pick up eventually, they're gonna be feeding quite a lot, hopefully. So I've got a pink six inch uh, one now, because the rhubarb and custard, the hook was just slightly, slightly bent. So we've got a slightly bigger lure on. Uh, so if I get a bigger fish, I'm a bit more confident of landing it and the hook staying in it as well. But I do like the four inch sidewinders on a smaller tide. There are fish sitting on this wreck, I can see them. Um, there's actually bass down there as well. They've, they've sort of got a big arch. Um, and on the sonar, if you've got a big arch going over a bit of wreck or reef, that's generally bass feeding. Um, fish. So there are, oh, there you go. Chris is in. So just as I said, we we're over a shoal of fish. Chris is into one. Oh, we've got the leader. Let's have a look. What's he going to be? Ah, a little pollock, or is it? Ah, a little pouting. Little pouting. Oh, oh wreck. Oh, no. no. Oh, fish on. Fish on. Oh, he come off. <laughs> what a bugger. Yeah, fish on guys, fish on. Fish on guys, it's not a big one, but it's a fish all the same. So I went back to a four inch lure, went over it with a six inch and didn't get a tap. Went back over to a four and I taps instantly. Which just proves my point that on a smaller tide, the four inch lures tend to be better. Might not be a great fish, but it's got a bit of weight to it, I'll tell you that. And he has put a little bit of knocking in, unless it's a granddad pout pouting, but yes, he's a granddad pouting. Not very exciting, but... Um, yeah, he did put up a few diving runs, we're still over the wreck, so I'm going to very quickly get my lure back out of this pouting's mouth. Come on, give me my lure back, thank you. Back down. Quickly get back down again. We're doing, we're doing about a knot of tide now, which is fantastic. Uh, we're going from about 0 0.5 to a knot, which is really, really good. That's absolutely ideal. It's half nine now, so it's an hour after slack water. So we should start seeing hopefully a few more fish and uh, yeah, the tide picking up a little bit. One is when you have got more tide, you do generally lose a bit more gear, but then the fishing is better. So swings around mouths. We're nearly off 
the back of it, haven't we? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go around once more on this one if you fancy it. A long time to get set up. Oh, there's, there's a fish on. There's a fish on, guys. I think it's probably a pouting, but... <laughs> a, yeah. Oh, there's a bit more weight to that. He's woken up a bit now. Oh, he has woken up a little bit. I'm going to say a pouting. I think it's probably just a big pouting. Yeah, solid weight. No real fight. Um, I mean, it's fighting there, but I'm still going to say a very big pouting. The beautiful thing with sea fishing is what's exciting is you never quite know what you can catch. You know, it could be gurnards, it could be grass, it could be anything. And I'm going to go for a pouting though. I really think it'll be a pouting. It's heavy though. It's going to be a big pouting. Bending, yeah? I know, that's what I mean. It's, it is heavy. It is really heavy. Um, but, Gernard, <laughs> how funny. What did I say? What did I say? I said it was playing a bit weird and uh, it could be, you can catch anything on a wreck. Gernards or, I'm just going to stop and let me show you in. Yeah, tub, tub Gernard on that four inch rhubarb and custard. Beautiful colours on them. Um, absolutely stunning colours get a nice photo and we'll go back around and give it a go but look at that lovely excellent really really happy with that i like a bit of a species hunt a bit different day and that's not actually a bad size look how gorgeous those colors are lovely they're gonna go back there you go there he goes that was a nice going up wouldn't it always a nice surprise i said it might be something a little bit different i did say pouting because i didn't want to be embarrassed when it come out to be a pouting and when I said it was something else but the reality was it was something okay so we're over the wreck now just showing oh fish on fish on straight away fish on immediately there but yeah I keep setting up this drift short because I think it's gonna be a really really sort of slow and it's not it just approaches really quick so uh yeah we'll um set it up a bit longer next time so we have a bit longer to get down and over the top of it this going to be? I reckon the pouting. Yeah, pouting. <laughs> Not what we're after, but there's life down there. <laughs> yeah. So, so far I'm winning for the smallest fish of the day. Perfect live bait that. But it's not what we're doing today, so little pouting. Right, so that wreck's gone a little bit quiet. Um, so we're just gonna go and try a, a different wreck now. Um, it's only about half a mile away, if that. Um, this is a little bit more in shore, but I say, not, not a lot. Um, that wreck might have turned on at some point, but you know, I just fancy a little change, just try something a bit different. Um, yeah, give it, keep on giving it a go, seeing what we can do, seeing what we can pick up. Right, so we're on our second wreck. Um, second proper wreck it's just coming into show now on the sonar so we're dropping down that shad and boom engaging our gear and winding up slowly let's see if we can pick up oh there's a fish straight away oh he come off he come off but there's a fish straight on there yeah i can see some i think they're bass feeding down there like little arches across so let's uh Well, another little gurner, I didn't film that one. Um, I was just setting up that drift on the, on there. And yeah, another another tub gurner, aren't they gorgeous? Beautiful, beautiful colors. And they do grunt as well, they're pretty cool. Look at that, there we go. Put that one down. Uh, I'm gonna get back down again because there's wreck coming up. Ooh. Let's see if we can. See if we can get two fish and two drifts. There's a bit of wreck coming up there, so we'll go back down. I think that girder means I'm in the lead now, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Beaten by a four inch. Beaten by a... Yeah, that's it. Right, guys, we've got a fish on. This is quite a nice one, I think. 
Really don't want to lose this one. Really don't want to lose this one. Chris got caught up in the wreck and was spinning our boat around and all of a sudden it locked up and thought, ah, wreck. And no, bang, 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 bang. Off it went. So we've got another fish on. It does feel decent. It does feel nice. Here it goes. A few more knocks. Here it comes. Yep, it's a pollock. It's a nice one. It's a nice one. Uh, yes! There we go. We were due another one. We were due another one. It's not huge, but again, it's a nice, it's a nice size fish for about three and a half, four pound. Nailed on a four inch white scary eel. And it's just nice to know that they're, they're there. Very high up in the water column, that one. And uh, yeah, nice to, nice to have got that. Excellent, lovely stuff. Right, well, we've got a slight technical error. Um, the, uh, the sonar, um, for some reason, the electrical connection for the transducer is spitting at me uh, with uh, sparks. So um, it's been turned off. Um, don't know why it's happened. Uh, there's obviously a fault with it. So that's gonna have to go back to manufacturer to be sorted. Garmin are generally very good uh, at sorting any issues out. But obviously, it's the only second time I've used it. So um, yeah, it will need to get sorted. Um, out uh <laughs> but yeah it's a tra it's the transducer there's a there's an issue with it as soon as we put in power it's spitting between the two uh the two the two sort of bars metal bars so what we're going to do is um so we're a long way out at the moment we're going to start heading in uh, and then we're going to fish some inshore reefs um i can do that without the transducer then we're nearer in it's a bit safer i don't want to be out here without a chart plotter um it is what it is so we're going to head in now slowly and um we will do some inshore uh, reefing with the slow pitch cheeks. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. 